The Gap Between U.S. and China in Mars Exploration On May 15, 2021 China successfully landed its first rover on Mars, becoming only the second nation to do so. Today we will discuss how big is the technological gap between China and the United States in the field of Mars exploration. The six-wheeled rover, which is about the size of NASA's twin Mars rover's spirit and opportunity from 2004, expected to spend at least 90 Mars days or about 93 Earth days roving around on Mars to study the planet's composition and look for signs of water ice. The landing point Utopia Planitia is believed to contain vast amounts of water ice beneath the surface. It's also where NASA's Viking to mission touched down in 1976. The landing process comparison. China reverse thrust engine. U.S. sky crane. Landing on the red planet is perilous. NASA engineers refer to it as seven minutes of terror when its most recently rover Perseverance arrived. Because Tianwen-1 was already in orbit around Mars, its incoming speed was not quite as fast as Perseverance's. Thus, China's lander required a bit of extra terror. Nine minutes for the landing. The Chinese lander carrying the rover was using the reverse thrust engine mode, slowed down through for steps. The first step, which lasts for about 190 seconds, is akin to braking, slowing down its speed from 4.8 km per second to 460 meters per second. Next, a parachute opened. Then a reverse thrust engine was ignited. After the first three steps, the lander carrying the rover was about 100 meters above the Mars surface. Hovering in the air, it can observe the surface, adjust its position and select a safe spot to land in an obstacle-avoiding mode. Spacecraft descend toward Mars at a high speed and the thin atmosphere does not do enough to slow the trip to the ground. The shock waves of air compressed by the speeding capsule generate extreme heat that must be absorbed or dissipated. A number of Soviet, NASA and European missions have crashed. Only NASA has reached the surface of Mars intact more than once. And NASA has succeeded in many different landing modes. For example, airbag bounce, reverse thrust engine deceleration, and the most incredible sky crane. When the Mars rover was small in weight, it chose to use the airbag bounce method. When the Mars rover became larger and the landing location required accuracy, it chose to use the reverse thrust engine to decelerate. NASA's largest rovers, Curiosity and Perseverance weighs more than one ton. The traditional landing methods were not feasible for this weight. That's why the incredible sky crane mode was implied. The landings have relied on parachutes to slow the spacecraft, shields to dissipate the heat from atmospheric friction and intricate systems called sky cranes. These were basically rocket-powered jetpacks, which carried the rovers beneath them and lowered them to the surface on cables before flying safely away from the landing zone. However, even the sky crane cannot meet the needs of future manned landers, which may weigh more than 13 tons. In contrast, the Chinese Zhu Rong rover carried by Tianwen-1 weighs only 240 kilograms. The landing method of thrust engine looks traditional, but reliable. It is a technology that has been tested in practice more than once during their lunar exploration missions. For their first land on Mars, it is a not bad choice. Data Comparison the United States has accumulated a wealth of data and experience in previous Mars exploration missions. This the disadvantage for China during its first Mars exploration mission. The lack of first-hand core data is also one of the important reasons why Tianwen-1 stayed in Mars orbit for three months before landing. At present, NASA has several probes in orbiting Mars, such as the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter which launched in 2005. The Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution which launched in 2013 and the Mars Odyssey from 2001. They not only provide a large amount of data on the Martian environment and can also provide relay communication services for the Perseverance rover. There is obviously no cooperation in Mars exploring between NASA and China. So it takes Tianwen three months in the Mars orbit to collect information and choose the launching location. Tianwen-1 used the high-resolution camera, carried by the probe to choose a suitable area before landing. In addition, the Tianwen-1 which separated in the orbit of Mars is an orbiter lander and rover. All in one. It is an aircraft which send the rover to the Mars landing orbit. In the meantime it is a communicator to establish and provide relay communication services for the rover. It also will stay in the Mars orbit serving as a probe for future scientific exploration. 
It is not designed to come back to the Earth. A place to land and goal of the trip. China has select a relatively easy place for touchdown. A basin in the North Hemisphere known as the Utopia Planitia. It is where NASA landed its second lander, the Viking II in 1976. Perseverance landed in a different area, called the Azero Crater. It is tougher landing compared with Utopia Planitia. The instruments on board Perseverance are mainly used to explore whether there is life on Mars. And the goal is to prepare for man landing on Mars. Perseverance was designed to take the samples back to the Earth. NASA planned to bring back the samples in 2030 in a joint mission with European Space Agency. In contrast, in the field of Mars exploration, China is still the newcomer. The main goal of the first trip is to make sure the rover land in one piece. Chinese Mars exploring instrument focus on the basic research including rock composition, soil, geology, and atmospheric composition on the surface of Mars and look for signs of water ice. The landing point Utopia Planitia is perfect choice for their goals. Technically the U.S. Mars rover Perseverance is more difficult than that of China Tianwen-1. For example, the Martian helicopter carried by Perseverance flies in the atmosphere outside the Earth for the first time. Secondly, Perseverance also uses carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere as a raw material for the first time and can directly generates carbon monoxide and oxygen through high-temperature electrolysis. This means that it is technically possible for humans to use the Martian atmosphere as a raw material to directly produce oxygen for breathing. The U.S. technology is still the most advanced, but the mission that China is executing are very impressive. Unlike U.S. already leading the space, exploring for more than 50 years, China is active in the space, exploring mission much later. But their success landing on Mars already can prove China has done more and faster in less time than US. They are catching up fast and quickly. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.